if any of you have been uh, wondering about the uh, quality of the speakers we've invited to your delectation this weekend, uh, you'll be pleased to know that our next speaker uh, was ranked number 51 <laughs> in a recent list of the hundreds, hundred most influential, spiritually influential living people. <laughs> so... With that assurance of quality, I would like to <laughs> welcome the lovely Jeff. Jeff. So that's quite a lot to live up to, then, really. <clears throat> so I thought maybe I would just uh, start by saying a few words um, About, some, about something that we can't really talk about, which is, which is funny. Um, and then I'll just open up for questions. If any of you have any questions, um, there'll be plenty of time for that. Or well, maybe not plenty of time, but there'll be some time. Um, so non-duality. So what is non-duality? I'm, I'm asking. I, I, ha I have no idea. <laughs> I've absolutely no idea. Um, it's, it's a word. It's a word. Um, it's a strange word because, in a way, it's a very dualistic word. You know, non-duality, not duality, not something. You know, so it, um, in a way, this this is why I I don't. I very rarely actually use the word non-duality these days because I, I think it's. Um, it's become so misunderstood, really, and, and, and misused, this word non-duality, because um, I, I speak from my own experience. You know, if, if you're not careful, non-duality just becomes you know, a, new, a new religion, a new, a new um, way to divide yourself from, from life, divide yourself from others. You know, I'm, I'm non-dualistic, but you're dualistic, or you know, I, I'm, I'm no one, I'm not a person, but you're a person, or, you know, there's no ego here. I have no ego, but you have an ego. So it just, it, very quickly, the mind kind of co-opts the word, you know, and we start dividing ourselves against each other again and dividing ourselves against life. And really, what I would say the word non-duality really points to is the, the absolute end of that um, division against life, you know, the, the division against experience, the division against... Um, Others, what we might call others, other people. Um, actually, um, Ru Rupert, um, who's, who's speaking later, I was watching, he did a lovely video. I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube. Um, uh, I think Boris filmed it. It was, um, he called, it was called The Final Furlong or something, and he was speaking about how People tend to come to non-duality after they've they've kind of tried everything else, you know, and it hasn't <laughs> and it hasn't hasn't really worked, you know. And that was certainly my experience. Um, you know, you 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 grow up and you and you um, you know you work hard and you you have all the correct experiences. You have all the experiences that your parents are telling you to, or your, or your teachers in school are telling you to, or even your spiritual teachers. You, know, you, you, you do everything right. You do everything right. And you're still not satisfied. You know, you, 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 you've, you've got the, the nice house and the relationship and the money and the success and the fame or what, whatever you thought you were supposed to have, and you, you've, you've, you've got it, you know. I've done everything right. I've, 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 I'm having all the correct experiences. 
but I'm still dissatisfied. But this is, this is um, you know, I always get very excited when people come to me in this place of um, disillusionment with life. I think it's a, it can be a very exciting, creative time. It's always very exciting when people come to me dis disillusioned with the world and also disillusioned with uh, spirituality and you know, disillusioned with all the promises of spirituality because, again, they've, they've, they've been to spiritual teachers, they've been to gurus, they've, they've taken in all the teachings, they've read all the books, they've gone to all the retreats, they've opened up their chakras and they've... Um, what else? They've ascended to the, you know, the 28th level of, 29th level of whatever, and, and they, they've had the, and then this, this, this was my experience, you know, you, you, you have the experiences of intense bliss and intense joy, and you think you're, you're getting somewhere. This is the sense of it, you know, you, you think you're getting somewhere, you think you're preparing, you think that this is some kind of dress rehearsal for like, something beautiful that's coming in the future. You know, you think, I'm on my way towards whatever. You know, it's, it's Dorothy headed towards the Emerald City, you know. And she thinks that once she, once she gets there, she gets, once she gets to the Emerald City, you know, and, and she, gets, she meets the Wizard of Oz, you know, He's going to take her home. He, he's the one. The Wizard of Oz is the one who has the power to take her home. But it, in the beginning, it's all very exciting. You know, you're dancing and singing down the yellow brick road, and the Emerald City is gleaming in the distance. And, and it's all very exciting, and it's very dramatic. And, and maybe that's what you need at the time. Maybe that, that's what's working for you at the time. You, you, you need the promise of a future salvation. You need it. You need the promise of a future enlightenment. You need the promise of a future salvation. You need the promise of a future, what, heaven or... At some point in your life, you, you need a future. You, you need the promises. You, you need the promise of, even the promise of enlightenment, the promise of awakening, the promise of some, some you know, energetic shift or whatever. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. Until it's not, you know, until, until you get tired of waiting. <laughs> you get tired of waiting. You get tired of waiting for life, you know. You get tired of waiting for love. You get tired of waiting for healing. You get tired of waiting for enlightenment. You get tired of waiting for what you think you should be waiting for, what you've been told you should be waiting for. You get, you get tired of the search. You get tired of it. Which is wonderful, which, which is wonderful, which is um, deeply intelligent, that, that exhaustion with the whole thing, that exhaustion with seeking, that, the, the exhaustion with um, the search. <coughs> Perhaps even that exhaustion is, is not a mistake. It's not a mistake. Perhaps even our suffering is not a mistake. Perhaps, perhaps nothing is a mistake. Perhaps nothing is a mistake. So it's, uh, yeah, at some point you, you get tired of... fighting. You get tired of fighting life. You know, you get tired of trying to escape this moment. Because on some level, deep in the recesses of your heart, you know, you, you know that this moment is home. You know that you know. You know that you are already home and that you have always been home. Just like just like Dorothy in the in the Wizard of Oz, I think, you know, we can forget about um, non-dual conferences, just show the Wizard of Oz on, on, on repeat, and you kind of learn everything you, everything you need to know about life, the universe, and everything. Everything you need to know about non-duality is contained in that, in, in, that, in that movie, you know. 
Because this is the thing, Dorothy, she finally gets there. She, she finally, finally, after all that seeking, she, she gets to the place where she thought she should be. She meets the Wizard of Oz, she, the, the ultimate guru, you know. Something outside of herself. That's, that's her dream. That's our dream, is that something outside of ourself has the power to take us home. Some external authority, some guru, some teacher, some whatever. So she, she, you know, she meets the Wizard of Oz, and of course it turns out that there is no Wizard of Oz. It's just some, it's some guy behind a curtain doing magic tricks, you know, and uh, of course this, this place is Dorothy in, in this place of total despair because now she's, she's stuck in this dream with no hope of getting home. You know, he, he was the one. And now even the one can't do it. So she reaches this place of total despair, this disillusionment. And in, in the midst of that, you know, in the midst of that disillusionment, she's reminded by, was it the, 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 nice, the nice witch, Glenda, is it? She, she's reminded, well, she's told, just, just look, you know, just look, look down. And, she, and she, she notices, she remembers that actually she always had the power. And she was the power. She had always been wearing the, the, the ruby slippers, and all she had all she had to do was remember all she had to do was remember. So she clicks her heels together three times and she wakes up. She finds herself back in Kansas, back home, where where she had always been. This is the thing. Not for one moment has she left Kansas. Not for one moment. So this, this, this whole dream, this, this whole dream that had become a nightmare, this, this whole dream of you know, seeking home, seeking the Wizard of Oz, seeking the Emerald City, seeking enlightenment, the whole dream of seeking home, feeling homesick, feeling homesick, seeking home, even, even coming home, Realizing that you could never come home, that, that whole dream, where had that been happening? Where had that been happening at, at home? The whole dream of leaving home and seeking home and finding home and not being able to come home, and that had all been happening at home. And, what, and what's home is where you are, home is you, home is your own presence here and now, home is this moment. You can't leave, you can't escape, you can't return. So maybe what you've always been seeking is, is you. Maybe you are, you are what you seek. You know, and many spiritual teachers over the years have been, have been saying this, I mean, in many, many different ways. And this is what I love about... Um, non-duality as well as the, I mean, the beauty of it is there's, there's no authority, you know, no, I, I, there's no, there's no authority. There's no one who is the expert on non-duality, the, the king or queen of non-duality. There's no wizard of Oz. So all, all we can really do is, as whatever, whatever we are, non-dual, Speakers, teachers, communicators, whatever, whatever we call ourselves. I, I have no idea, but what can we do? We, we can share this, this universal truth in, in our own way, in our own language. You know, we, we, we sing our, our own song. No one's the expert. So maybe what you've always been seeking is, is you, you, your, your, own, your own presence here and now. 
In a way, it's, it's, it's too simple, you know. For the mind, it's way too simple. The mind thrives on complex theories and teachings and it, because it, it loves the complex, the mind loves the complexity of the dream, you know, and all the stages and levels and the attainments and the hierarchies and the... It's all very exciting for a while, but as, as I said, at some point, you can no longer quite believe in it anymore. You, it doesn't... Um, doesn't satisfy anymore. At some point, the question, who am I, really becomes a, a burning question. It becomes a burning question. And we, all, we all have to face that question in the end, who am I? No, one's ever, no, no one has ever been able to avoid the question, who am I? So, the, I mean, the, the question, what is non-duality, is probably the wrong question. Underneath that question, before we even begin to ask the question, what is non-duality? Because the mind loves that question. Oh, no, well, non-duality is this, and non-duality is this, and non-duality is this, and, you know, it goes off on its lectures and its speeches, and... But un underlying that question is, is a deeper question, which, which is, who am I? Even if... Even if I manage to become enlightened, even if I manage to reach the Emerald City, even if I manage to find the Wizard of Oz, even if I manage to ascend to the you know, 79th level of consciousness, we're going higher now. <laughs> well, who would I be when I got there? Who would be the one who was there? Which is the same question as who is the one here? Because you know, even when I get there, I'm going to be here. It's going to be here and now. I'll be at the 79th level, I'll be at the 80th level of consciousness, but I'll be here and it will be now. So that question, who am I, is, is pretty important, really. But that question will haunt you. It will haunt you if it's not deeply looked into. It will haunt you. You know, you, you, could, you could travel in time and in space, you could travel back into the past, travel into the future, but you know, you, you, you'll find yourself in the farthest reaches of space and the farthest reaches of time, and the question, who am I, will still haunt you. You will never be able to escape that question. So that question, it calls you, it, call, it always calls you to itself in the end. And isn't that what suffering is, actually? Isn't that what suffering is? Is, is a call to... A call to that question, who am I? You know, suffering... Um, suffering always involves some kind of loss. That's really what suffering is, isn't it? It's... Um, something has been lost, some, some possession, some... Uh, or even just some idea of who I am, some idea of who I am. You know, for example, when, when, someone we love, when someone we love dies or leaves us, the end of the relationship is, is a kind of death. Or a loss, any kind of loss is a kind of death. Death of something that you thought was yours, death of something that you thought defined you. It's really, it, come, it all comes down to identity in the end. Who am I without this? Who am I? without this thing? Who am I without this possession? Who am I without this dream? So suffering um, is really a doorway into this investigation. If, if we can learn to turn towards our suffering, you know, and not run away from it. If we can learn to turn towards our suffering and not run away from it. When someone you love dies and, or leaves you, or you, a job is lost, or money is lost, or what, whatever, whatever. You know, and the, um, some intense wave feeling of loss, or sadness, or grief, or frustration, or despair comes up. Because the mind is a seeker, you know, it, it, it doesn't want this moment. It wants the Emerald City. 
That's, that's the basic mechanism of, of seeking. I don't want this moment. And is, isn't that the sense that goes right to the core of our suffering, is that life has somehow gone wrong? That, that's the sense. That, that was always, for me, the sense that when, when I just stayed with my suffering and really listened to it very, very deeply, what, what, was, it, what was it really saying? What, what, what was the sense underneath the suffering? It was life has gone wrong. This moment has somehow gone wrong. This shouldn't have happened. This shouldn't be happening. It's like some, some kind of cosmic violation, you know, that, oh, but it, this, this doesn't match my plan. That's the sense of it, isn't it? This, this, this doesn't match my plan. This moment doesn't match my idea of how this moment was going to be. That's the sense of it. It was supposed to be different. That's the sense of it. It wasn't supposed to be like this. That, that's the sense of it. And the, there's such a temptation there to... Um, try and get back to the way things were or try and escape to a future moment. That, that's really the mechanism of seeking. Sometimes I talk about the mechanism of seeking. It's like um, if, if, your, if your life is a movie, then right here, right now, this, this is the present scene of the movie of your life. And what the mind is always trying to do is rewind or fast forward. The mind wants to get out of this scene, so especially if, if the present scene is, is full of sadness or grief or doubt or frustration or boredom. Mind wants to rewind to a previous scene where, where there was joy or bliss. You know, the, we're kind of haunted by the memory of, the memory of a previous scene like that. We're, we're haunted by the memory of yesterday's bliss, yesterday's, yesterday's joy, yesterday's ecstasy. And this is why the spiritual seeking can become so frustrating because, you know, you, you go off and you, as I was saying, you, you have all these correct experiences. You, 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 you follow the advice of your guru and you sit and you meditate and you, and you have the, the bliss experience, the, the ecstasy experience. But it passes. It passes. Because all... It's the nature of experience. It's always, it's always changing. It's always moving. But we, we so badly we want to press pause. You know, we so badly want to press pause on this moment, especially when this moment is full of ecstasy and joy and bliss and certainty and all the good stuff. But then the, the joy passes, the ecstasy passes, as it, as it must, because it's, everything's alive, you know. The joy, the bliss, the boredom, the ecstasy, the, the pain, it's all you, what you are is the space for all of this. That's how vast you are. That's how spacious you are. You, you allow the, the bliss as much as the boredom, the ecstasy as much as the, the sadness. Everything has a home in you. Everything has a home in you. This is, this, and this isn't some special state or experience that we're talking about. This is how you're actually built. What we're, what we're really talking about is how you're actually built. Sometimes I say awakening is really... It's the discovery of how you're actually built. It's not, it's not a state or an achievement or a special experience that some people are having and others aren't. It's, it's a remembering of your vastness. So there's, there's in what you are, there's the space for all of it. The, the bliss is allowed to come and go. The boredom is allowed to come and go. The, the joy is allowed to come and go. The, the frustration, can, all, all of these movements of life have, have a home in you. And the, the mind so badly wants to press pause or rewind or fast forward. But what we're not told is that 
the buttons, the rewind, the fast forward buttons do not lead home. You can't rewind your way home and you can't fast forward your way home. You can't even pause your way home. Home is play. Home is play. So the, the invitation is always here. We, we forget it, of course. The, the invitation to to be here, the invitation to stay when every fiber of your being says, run away, run away, run away. Run away from this sadness, run away from this grief, run away from this frustration. But this is life, you see. Whatever appears is, is life. The sadness is not against life, it is life. It's an expression of life, the one life, the universal life, whatever you want to call it, God, consciousness, awareness, blah, 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 whatever. The words don't really matter. Why, why would we imagine Why would we imagine that, that that infinite universal intelligence that exploded as the Big Bang, that, that moves as the stars and the planets, and that grows the flowers in springtime, and, and why would we imagine that, that that infinite intelligence has abandoned this moment? Why would we imagine that that infinite intelligence is not expressing itself right here and right now as this present experience, even this frustration, this, this, this sadness, this pain, this, this boredom, why would we imagine that that infinite intelligence is not moving right here, right now, as this? You know, as, as humanity, we seem, we seem to have lost that, that basic trust that whatever appears in our present experience is life. It's not against life. It's not against who we are. It's part of who we are. What, what we are is vast enough to hold this. So we, we just simply lose interest in having the um, Correct experiences, you know. We we sometimes I say we, we lose interest in the in the, the lists. We're we're always given lists from from the moment we're born. In the way we're we're given lists of what we should be feeling and what we shouldn't be feeling. The, the correct feelings, the incorrect feelings, the the, in, the correct thoughts that we should be having, the incorrect thoughts. You know, or maybe if we've had religious up, uh, conditioning, the, the, the pure, the, the godly feelings and the ungodly, unholy feelings, the, the sinful feelings, the sinful thoughts. You know, the, or in our modern language, it's we, we, positive and negative. We talk about positive thoughts, negative thoughts, positive feelings, negative feelings. And then we're, we're taught that we should have more of the positive feelings and thoughts and have less of the negative. And so we just go to war. We end up going to war with our present experience. But the invitation is always there to end the war. The invitation is always there. And it only takes a moment. It only takes a moment. So whatever is appearing in your present experience right now, and of course you're only ever dealing with right now, you're only ever dealing with right now. You're only ever facing right now. Of course what might be appearing right now is, is a memory of something that happened yesterday or the day before or many years ago, and there may be a dream of tomorrow. But those, the memories and the dreams appear here, where, where you are. 
You, you, you are, you are the one constant. Not the you of, of thoughts and imagination, because the thoughts are always changing and moving. They're, they're part of the ever-changing, the world of the ever-changing. Thoughts are always appearing and disappearing, moving and changing. But you always remain. Feelings are always moving and changing. I mean, throughout your life, look at all the feelings, all the sometimes very intense feelings that have arisen and fallen, that have appeared and disappeared. Maybe sometimes there were feelings that were so intense you couldn't ever imagine them disappearing. There were feelings that you could never, you could never imagine them, that they would ever go away. Or there were feelings that you, that you imagined would never reappear. It can work that way as well. But throughout all of that coming and going, all of the, the, waves, in the, the waves in the ocean, the thoughts, sensations, feelings, you have always remained. The, the unchanging constant, the, the one common denominator of your life is you. So the, the you of thoughts, I'm not talking about, the you of thoughts is always changing. The, the you of feelings is always changing. The you of sensation is always changing. The you of dreams and memories is always changing. But in the midst of all of that change, there's something here that, that never changes. And yet, of course, in the end, you can't really say what, what, you can't really say what this is, this, this unchanging presence that you are, this unchanging life that you are. Because the moment we use any word, a word is already part of the world of the ever-changing. Words come and go. Even the word non-duality, even the word awareness, even the word consciousness, No, no word will ever capture the unchanging presence of you that never ages, the body ages, what you are never ages. So even the word non-duality is just, it's a, what is it? It's a word, it's a sound. It's, it's attempting to point to the vast, unspeakable, mysterious, ever-present ocean that you are. It's beyond someone and no one. It's beyond self and no self. We get so caught up in these divisions, you know, duality, non-dual, oh, this is non-dual, but that's not non-dual, and self and no self. It, it drives you crazy in the end. <coughs> You know, you, you listen to enough non-dual teachers and you, you start to go a little bit crazy. <laughs> and the poor old mind, you know, trying to work it all out. Well, what's, what is non-duality? Well, he said this, but she said that, and he said that. And... So what, what may arise again is that is we come back to that, that sense of frustration or that sense of disillusionment or that just that, yeah, confusion, just that sense of confusion. But then what, what, if, what if even that confusion is not the enemy? What if even that sense of confusion, even that sense of not understanding right now, what if even that can have a home? in this moment? What if even, even that, even, even that sense of confusion, that sense of tension in the body, that sense of discomfort, what if actually that, that is not a block to what you long for? What if that, as it is, is actually an expression of 
what you long for? What if there are no blocks to awakening? The mind always thinks in terms of blocks, or oh, this is blocking me. Shouldn't be feeling this. If I, if I could just get rid of this feeling or this confusion. If I was awakened, I wouldn't be feeling this. I bet that non-duality speaker doesn't feel this. Always comparing, 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 blah, blah, blah. blah. And it becomes so exhausting. But again, even that exhaustion is intelligent because what that exhaustion is saying, well, yeah. Of course it's going to be exhausting seeking for something that you already are, trying to, <laughs> trying to get there when all you really long to do is to be at home here, to rest here. And then we get all caught up again, or caught up in, well, yeah, but isn't non-duality about becoming no one or losing the self? Or oh, maybe, non oh, I know, non-duality is about believing there's no choice. It's all a distraction, you know? So it's the play button. It's, it's the absolute yes to this moment. It's the absolute yes to this moment. You're not trying to say yes. Because that could just become another form of seeking. You're not, tr you're not even trying, you're not even trying to allow this moment. Because then you know, allowing, allowing or acceptance becomes the new Emerald City. Everything just becomes the new Emerald City. The mind is ingenious. It will, it will take anything and it will turn it into a new goal. It will even take acceptance, turn it into a new goal. It will take allowing and turn it into a new goal. It will, it will take no one. Or one day I'll be no one. One day the, one day the self will fall away. One, and it becomes another escape. You're not trying to allow this moment, you're just re remembering it. It's, just, it's this simple remembering that this moment is already allowed. It's already here. It's already, it's about the already. That's where the freedom lies, is in the already. The last place we would ever look, the last place the mind would ever look, because the mind is so obsessed with time, 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 time. So already is death to the mind. Already, already, already here, already here. Because the mind is like, well, that gives me nothing to do. And we're like, yeah. And that's what, becomes so frust that's what can become so frustrating about this non-dual message is because well, the mind is like, yeah, but what about the 97th level of consciousness? And what about... And we just say to the mind, look, that's, that's very sweet. <laughs> and, and you're allowed to long for that. You are allowed to long for that. But even your very longing for that even if that's what's appearing in this moment, is a sense of, a sense of longing. What we're saying is that even that sense of longing is, is deeply allowed to be here right now. Even that sense of longing is an expression of, it's, a, it's, it's life burning as longing. It's life fully expressing itself as a sense of longing. Life is not far away. It's here in the most intimate recesses of our experience. So the longing for life, the longing for awakening, the longing for whatever you long for. If instead of running away from that sense of longing and seeking for what we long for, if instead we, we just simply turn to feel the longing, 
And to remember that even this sense of longing is life burning. How can you long for life when life is burning as longing? And then it's not even longing. Then we have no way of knowing what it is. And then in this place where we are, we just we remove all the labels. Longing. We don't know that this is longing. What is it? It's life burning. We don't know what it is. Is this sadness? Well, we've called it sadness. We don't know. Is this anger? We've called it anger. We don't know. These are all secondhand words. Is this frustration? Well, we've called it frustration. We don't know what it is. Is this boredom? Oh, we've been calling it boredom our whole lives. Have we, ever, have we ever really met ourselves? Have we ever really met this moment? There's a Zen koan for you. Have you ever really met this moment? Yes, well, I met the moment yesterday. Yeah, I've done all my moment meeting. No. So who cares about yesterday's awakening? Who cares about tomorrow's glorious enlightenment? You're here. You may not get tomorrow. That's why the, this moment is so precious, it's so fragile, it's so alive, so full of life. And it contains all the answers that you seek. It contains all the intelligence of life itself. It contains all the solutions. So it's, it's okay, you know, this is the beauty of non-duality. It's not like a new list, it's not a new list of rules. It's an invitation. It's like, yes, yes, you can seek. Yes, you can run away from this moment. Yes, you can try not to feel this. Yes, you can try to fast forward your way out of this moment. Yes, you can try to rewind your way out of this moment. Yes, there's no punishment. There's no hell. There's no reincarnating as a, I don't know, whatever. But if you, if you run away from this moment, if you run away from this life that burns in you, this, even if it burns as longing, even if it burns as frustration, even if it burns as there's just the sense that you're not there yet. Perhaps even that is precious. And if you run away from it, you may just miss the, the gold. You may just miss the gold. And the last place we would ever look for the, the treasure is in the very thing that we're running away from. Was it Joseph Campbell said that the cave that, you've, that you're afraid to enter contains the treasure that you seek? Joseph Campbell also said, um, <laughs> if the path before you is clear, you're probably on someone else's. <laughs> So I've spoken for way too long. We have time for maybe just a few questions. Thank you. So if you, thank you. Can you please just put your hand up and I think we have a microphone for the audience. Um, Hi. Hi. Thank you. Clarify the the unchanging the unchanging you that isn't the thoughts, feelings, actions, the, those those that come and go. Yeah. But left the I, the you that you referred to. Could you speak more of of that you, that I? 
because obviously in the last couple of days we've we've heard a lot about the eye sort of dying and living and yeah <laughs> yeah it's all very confusing um you know what that's why i found teachers use all these words in very different ways and a lot of them they're not particularly clear about how they're using the word you know so one teacher will say there is no self and the other teacher will say, no, no, but there is a self. And, but they're using the word self in completely different ways. Exactly. That's what becomes so confusing and infuriating, which is great because then it, it, what the whole thing is pointing to is, is like trust your own experience, you know? Trust, trust your own experience. So um, so you, I mean, who, who you have always been, who you have, you have always known yourself as. So everyone has this sense of, Right now, everyone has this sense of just, let's just say it simply, be, being, being here, right? Being here, this sense that has, it's always been with you. So this, this sense of being, this sense of existing, this, this sense of aliveness, it's here now, it, it's always been with you. Ever since you were a child and b before, you, you know, it, it doesn't seem to depend on age. Thank you, because to me, you're talking about the, the still, silent space yeah. within. You're talking well, this, about beingness and not yeah. this, this self, this little mini-me that has to fall away. No, 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 nothing has to fall away. That, that's another <sighs> Wizard of Oz thing, you know. That's another future scene. Okay, one day the self will fall away. One day the self will fall away. But who you truly are would never say that. Who you truly are has no interest in something called a self falling away. No interest, no interest, zero, zero. Stillness has no interest in something called a self falling away. The, the, um, the, very quickly, the, the best metaphor for this, I think, is, so this, this um, theater that we're in, this, 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 this room, um, so over the years, all kinds of content has appeared and disappeared in this room. People have walked in and walked out. And there have been all kinds of presentations. Like This room has, has known dancing and singing, and there's been pain in this room, and there's been fear in this room, and there's been confusion in this room, and there have been all kinds of thoughts appearing and disappearing in this room. There's been longing in this room. There's been waiting for the self to fall away in this room. There's been thinking that the self has fallen away in this room. <laughs> there's been identifying as a spiritual seeker looking for enlightenment happening in this room. There's been identification as a spiritual teacher who's found enlightenment in this room. The room doesn't care. The room is whole, simply, all it knows, all the room knows is, um, the, the room is the embrace. The room is the holding, the ever-present, unchanging, holding, allowing, embracing. Again, words always come later. Words are just more content coming and going in the room. So how, we can't even talk about the room. I mean, in, this, in the sense of the metaphor, you know. But um, words could help point, so they're just pointers. But for, the, for the, the room, and this is a metaphor for what you are, what you are is like this vast, infinite, unchanging room in, in which all the content of you, not, the content of you is thoughts, sensations, feelings, memories, dreams, ideas, all of it, all of it. Um, that's what's always changing. We, we, uh, uh, some people call that the self or the small self, the, the world of the ever-changing content. Some people use the word self for the, no, no, the self is the, the big self, the room. Um, but in the end, you find your own language for this. You find your own language. You don't need to, it used to confuse the hell out of me, all this language stuff, you know? Because one teacher said, no, no, the, the self, and the other teacher said, no, no, it, it, awareness, awareness. And the other teacher said, no, consciousness, consciousness. And the other teacher talked about, no, 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 there's no self. And the other teacher said, but who knows that? Who knows the self? The and the witness of the witness of the self, of the non-self, of the, <laughs> the subject, of the object. And, it, and it's all content. It's all content. And the only question is, right now in this moment, what, what is allowing? What is allowing all, of the, all the buzz and the, all the activity and the... That's not a mistake. The, the activity, the content... From the perspective of the room, the content is not a problem. The room has no interest in getting rid of the content. All it knows is allowing. 
Not because it's trying to allow the content, because that is how it's built. It doesn't, it, the, the, room would never, would, the room would never even say, I am allowing this. It doesn't even know that. That's a human word that we've invented. But it, it might help to... So, if we're talking about who you truly are, we're talking about the vast room of you in, in which thoughts are allowed to come and go, sensations are allowed to come and go, even a sense of, frust even a sense of resistance, even that, it even allows that. Um, the room can't be defined by the content. It can't be damaged by the content. The room has no interest in becoming awakened. That's more content. It's, it's just what you are. It's just that pure, unconditional. And that's where words, that's why you have to become a poet. That's why you have to stop pretending to be a teacher and become a poet. That, that's why, as I said in the beginning of the talk, I, I don't really know what the word non-duality means anymore. It's used in so many different ways by so many different people, like, like the word spirituality. You know, so, but yes, it's, the, it's that unchanging stillness. The room is always at rest. It's never trying to become anything. It has no opposite. And it, ultimately, and this is why it's just a metaphor, ultimately in the end, the room and the contents, you can't even, you, then you can't even talk about the room and its contents. It's one movement. It's all one movement. Just like in the end, you can't really talk about the ocean and the waves. It's all one movement. So that's when even the word non-duality, not to. I mean, in the end, even that word dissolve. Even that word is more content. So all of this stuff about the self falling away, that's content speaking. The room has zero interest in something called a self falling away, because it's time. The room doesn't know time. It's, it's here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if we have any more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.